How does water quality influence pesticide performance? Today we're going to talk about how to optimize pesticide use and to better understand how water sources should be considered before preparing or applying pesticides. Does water quality make a difference in pesticide performance on your farm? Have you experienced any of these issues? Corroded nozzles, clogged equipment, pesticide burn or pesticide failure? Um, <clears throat> water is one of nature's most remarkable liquids and it's capable of dissolving or suspending minerals and organic matter. It's one of the reasons why pesticide sprays mainly use water as a liquid carrier. Water quality influences how active ingredients perform. If the source of water that we use for making pesticide is problematic and of poor quality, it can lead to clogged filters and nozzle tips, unexpected damage on our crop plants, and even pesticide failure. Often we don't think about the quality of the water source for we use to make our pesticide mixtures. Water is the most common diluting agent. We use that most frequently. There are three main ways that a water source can interfere with pesticides' ability to control pests. Water pH, water hardness, and turbidity, which is the amount of particles dissolved in your water. In this session, you'll learn how these main factors can influence the activity of, pe of a pesticide and ways we can improve water quality to optimize your control with pesticides. The rate at which a particular pesticide dissolves and breaks down depends on the pH of your spray water. pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion in solution and ranges from 0 to 14 using a math-based 10 scale. Spray water that is acidic has a pH value of less than 7. A pH of 7 is neutral and spray water is considered basic if the pH value is greater than 7. Because this is a base 10 scale, a pH of 5 to 10 is a 5 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 6 and 100 times more acidic than a pH of 7. I listed are a few examples of familiar acids in our everyday lives. As we move up the pH scale, substance become, substances become less acidic. For example, lemon juice is 100 times more acidic than tomato juice. Here are a few examples of familiar bases that we'll see every day. As we move up the pH scale, substances become more basic. Bleach, for instance, is 100 times more basic than ammonia. Now that we have a better understanding of pH and how it's measured, measured uh, let's see how pH can impact pesticide spray mixtures. <clears throat> Think about where you source your water from for preparing your pesticide mixtures. The North, the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality has updated state maps as shown here that report the relative pH levels in stream water. On the above right and uh, groundwater is the lower left. The coastal line tends to have more acidic water while the mountain region tends to have basic water. The source of your spray water and where your farm, and where your farm is can make a difference in your spray water quality. For applicators that use well water as a water source for their pesticide mixtures, we find that water pH can also vary from location to location. In this two-year study, or in this two-year survey, pH results of, of the water tested from private wells were mainly close to neutral. However, some regions of the state, especially the Sand Hills, had highly variable water pH levels. But how will that pH interfere with a pesticide application? Pesticide spray water with a pH higher than 7 creates, a basic creates basic conditions that can cause some pesticides to undergo degradation or chemical breakdown, a process known as hydrolysis. In general, insecticides are much more susceptible to hydrolysis than are fungicides, herbicides, defoliants, or growth regulators. If you recall the earlier slides, on a pH scale, soapy water measures at a 
pH of 12 and is an example of a basic solution. Soapy water must be properly rinsed out of our spray tanks and nozzles, as the applicator demonstrates in the photo. To remove any soap residue, which can offset the pH of additional pesticide spray mixtures. That leads us to ask, how do we know if pH is causing our pesticide mixture to break down? A pesticide begins to break down as soon as it's opened and is poured out of its container. A pesticide's product life, half-life is the time, usually in days, sometimes in hours or minutes. It takes for one half of any amount of that particular pesticide to be broken down and become inactive. Let's say, for instance, we have 10 gallons of glyphosate or Roundup. That is our initial amount of an initial amount or 100% of active pesticide product at the time of mixing. Its half-life is the number of hours or days until we are left with only 50% of our active product or five gallons of glyphosate. The other 50% has already broken down, therefore providing weed control at half of the recommended rate and increasing the likelihood of pesticide failure and herbicide resistance development. This table shows general differences in the half-life of herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides as the pH level of a prepared pesticide mixture changes. Notice how the times notice how the time these mixtures remain active decreases as the pH becomes more basic. In general, we observe that pesticide products are, are most active under a acidic spray water conditions. However, we should not make these general assumptions for all herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides. We need to always make sure to check the label for the optimal pH range for each specific pesticide, especially when tank mixing multiple products. For example, glyphosate is a salt formulation that binds readily with water. The typical half-life for glyphosate is 47 days. And for optimal control, the diluted spray should be at 5.5, a pH of 5.5. Syngenta's Mycora fungicide, on the other hand, provides optimal fung fungal control at a pH above 9 and rapidly breaks down in solution. When dissolved, the half-life of Mycora is less than one day. These products will, would be less effective if mixed together because of their optimal control. Uh, occurs at a very different pH level. <clears throat> it is important to know that each pesticide product has an optimum pH range where it is most active. Most pesticides, most pesticide products perform within best within the four to seven pH range. Depending on where you farm and the source of your spray water, the pH in North Carolina can range anywhere from 6.5 to 7.6. By testing our water source, we can find if we need to make any pH adjustments to optimize our pesticide spray. So how do we go about testing our water pH? The items used to measure pH are inexpensive, safe, and simple to use. pH can be measured by a digital pH meter or with sample test strips. Digital pH meters and simple pH test strips can be found at various local and online stores for quick testing of spray water pH. If your water sources come from a private well, municipal water, or pond, it may be worth having the water tested professionally. Their tests provide a more in-depth analysis of water, of water quality. <clears throat> Many certified commercial labs and specialized water companies will conduct a full water analysis for free. Municipal water quality reports are also readily available to the public. If you decide to do it yourself, this is one quick and easy way to test the pH of your pesticide spray water. The water should be representative of the water used for spraying. 
So let the water run along enough to flush out and to flush out any standing water in the hose and pipes. Collect a small water sample in a glass jar and test this pH soon after collection because it can change if it's stored too long. If a buffering agent isn't used to adjust the pH to an ideal range, then applicators should remember to use spray mixtures as soon as possible. This will minimize the amount of time for degradation to occur. Depending on the pH and the type of pesticide, a pesticide mixture can degrade to half strength within 48 minutes. Another quick and easy way to measure the pH of pesticide spray water is the use of additives. Additives are inactive ingredients that can be added to the pesticide spray mixture to improve performance. There are products on the market that when added to the pesticide spray mixture serve as indicators and change water and change color according to the pH. Take for example, this sample label of Brandt Indicate, Indicate 5. When added to the spray water, it changes the color of the pesticide spray mixture as it modifies the pH. Brandt Indicate 5 will turn from pink, magenta color, if acidic, a pH near 4.5, to a pale yellow clear if the mixture is basic or above a pH of seven. <clears throat> the purpose of an adjuvant is to provide a specific function that will enhance the performance of a pesticide. They are inactive ingredients and do not provide any control against the target pest. However, we can use adjuvants to modify pH levels if our water sources are too high or too low. Buffering agents stabilize the, stabilize the pH at a constant level. How effective a buffer product is depends on its concentration of phosphoric acid and the degree of alkalinity of the mixing water that is being neutralized. The more basic the water, the greater the amount of buffer that will be needed. Acidifier adjuvants lower the pH of the water in the spray tank before preparing the diluted pesticide mixture, along, although they do not necessarily maintain a constant pH level. Acidifying agents like Sorba, Spray, MG, NutraWet, Nutrex, Leaf Life, NutraAid, Wex, and Trifold reduce pH values of about 8 down to 5.5 or 6 when used at one to two pints per 100 gallons. Products like Brandt Indicate 5 will change color as they alter the pH, making it easier for the applicator to reach the optimum pH spray to mixture. Muriatic acid or vinegar are not effective for this purpose. Before using any adjuvant, make sure to check the pesticide label. Many EPA registered pesticides, pesticide products have very specific recommendations on their label about using one or more adjuvants. To determine how much buffering agent to add to the tank, an applicator must know the pH of the water, the volume needed to treat, and the buffering agent used. Applicators should follow all buffering agent directions to determine exactly how much adjuvant to add to the tank. Some products give directions indicating the amount of buffering agent to be used with water of different alkalinity, but not all do. Here we have provided a simple protocol and calculations for determining the amount of buffering agent required for spray application using the sample points of, uh, using a sample pint of spray water. Here, we have provided a simple protocol and calculations for determining the amount of buffering agent required for a spray application using a sample pint of spray water. The second factor of water that can impact a, a pesticide application is water hardness. Hard water contains dissolved particles, often metals, with a positive charge greater than one. An ion like magnesium and iron carry a net positive charge and are called positive ions. Calcium, ma calcium magnesium, iron, and aluminum. Water hardness is measured in parts per million, but some water analysis reports use grains per gallon or milligrams of dissolved carbonate per liter.
Roughly 85% of the United States has hard or extremely hard water, yet North Carolina's groundwater is mainly soft. The mountains in some areas along the coast have been found to have hard to moderately hard water. This regional data was first collected in 1975 and still accurate today. How, hard, how can hard water influence a pesticide application? The dissolved particles in the spray water contain positive ions that can reduce the effect effectiveness of salt formulated pesticides, especially if the pH of the water is outside the ideal range. This happens because the pesticide disassociates into positively and negatively charged components and the positive ions in the spray water bind with the negatively charged portions of the pesticide. This results in molecules that either can't be absorbed by the target pest, either at a slower rate or form in, in so, uh, insoluble uh, salts. A few examples of these salt formulated pesticides include 2,4-D, glyphosate, cithoxidin, amazepir, and glufosinate. If you suspect you may have hard water, there are several ways to have your water tested. <clears throat> if you suspect you may have hard water, there are several ways to have your water tested. For folks who prefer a do-it-yourself method, they can do the at-home soap test, use a test strip kit, or a titration kit that can be purchased online or at any local hardware store. To have a water sample professionally tested, the NCDA and CS private laboratories provide these lab testing services for a fee. The NCDA and CS agronomic services can analyze many different kinds of water solutions for monitoring water quality and agricultural operations. They charge $5 per sample for NC residents, and this is what their sample water solution form looks like. It is very important to pay attention to the solution use codes listed at the bottom. With testing for pesticide spray water, we, can, we always want to make sure to indicate the SP pesticide solution code. If left blank or marked incorrectly, the test results and recommendations cannot be read or interpreted properly. <clears throat> Shown here is a sample report that lists a wide range of information depending on the use of the water source. For pesticide spray water, we want to focus on the pH, which is the far left, and the hardness, far right values listed under the other results column of the water solution report. Recommendations will be provided by the NCDA and NCS agronomists only if this sample is denoted as a PS pesticide solution sample on the submission form. Your local extension agent can also provide recommendations based on the sample results. Not all reports provide this information in the same format. This is also, this is a sample analysis report from a private lab that is common in North Carolina and also emphasizes the importance of testing pesticide spray water prior to making an application. This particular water source has a slightly basic pH at 7.35 and a slight to moderate level in water hardness. Recommendations are listed at the bottom of the report, indicating that the pH and water hardness may negatively impact certain pesticides. Test results will indicate if the spray water is hard or will require any adjustment. Water softening additives designed for pesticide applications are available to offset hard water problems. These additives work effectively by reducing the pH and remove the hard water ions from solution. For example, when aluminum sulfate, or AMS, dissolves in hard water, it negatively charged sulfate ions combined with hard water, 
hard waters, positively charged ions to neutralize the mixture. It is worth mentioning a particular type of pesticide adjuvant called non-ionic surfactants do not overcome the antagonism between salt-formulated herbicides like glyphosate and glufosinate in hard water. Non-ionic surfactants do not carry an electric charge and are often added to a pesticide mixture to enhance performance because they help with reducing the surface tension of water when in solution. The next two slides are example pesticide label statements that include recommendations on using water conditioning agents for amending water hardness. Shown here is the exact wording from Alligator's glyphosate 5.4 herbicide label. Ammonium sulfate, when added to the spray mix water, minimizes the loss of the active ingredient glyphosate in hard water. Some high pH water or hard water contain high amounts of ionized calcium and magnesium that will combine with glyphosate to form, glyph or to form calcium glyphosate and magnesium glyphosate crystals. This crystallization makes glyphosate less effective as a weed killer. This next sample, this next sample label is taken from the Bronc Triple water conditioning agent. For land applications, they suggest three quarts per 100 gallons of spray solution for most situations. However, extremely hard water and stressful environments may require additional water conditioning agents. As with water pH, additive products can also be used to measure water hardness. Earlier, we discussed how Brandt's Indicate 5 product changes color according to pH. This particular product also changes color according to water hardness and serves as a useful indicator for both water factors of pesticide spray water. The third and final water factor that we will discuss and how its impact how it impacts a pesticide's performance is water turbidity. Turbidity is the haziness or cloudiness of a liquid caused by suspended particles. The haze or cloudiness is caused by things like soil, especially clay and silt, organic matter, and microscopic organisms, all of which can reduce the effectiveness of a pesticide. Enclosed in the red box are some commonly used pesticides with high binding potential that are susceptible to becoming inactive by suspended soil particles and water. Applicators should always use clear, clean water and spray tanks to minimize pesticide inactivity and to prevent soil particles from plugging nozzles and screens, which leads to uneven spray patterns and lost time repairing equipment. Some pesticide labels will caution against water turbidity as this sample label of Roundup Pro herbicide illustrates. The warning statement highlights the potential for reduced herbicide activity if the poor spray water is used. Water turbidity can easily be measured at the farm and doesn't require much effort. The sample bucket test quickly and simply determines if too many minerals and particles are dissolved in any spray water source. First, you fill a white five gallon bucket with water intended for pesticide spray mix. Drop a quarter into the bucket of water. If you cannot see the quarter, use a different source of water for pesticide spray mixtures. Depending on where you get your water for pesticide spray mixtures, various options are available to remove minerals and dissolved particles in your spray water. A water filtration system ranges in cost and complexity and may be worth considering if drinking water is also a concern on your property. Other factors to consider are, are an addition of beneficial organisms to a pond water source. <clears throat> a water filtration system ranges in cost and complexity and may be worth considering if drinking water is also a concern on your property. <clears throat> Other factors to consider are are the addition of beneficial organisms to, your pond, to a pond water source or exploring ways to minimize soil erosion near your water source. Local agents can help with identifying best suited solutions specific to your farms. 
During this presentation, we discussed three important factors of important factors for water, which are pH, hardness, and turbidity. We learned how they are measured, how they can reduce the activity of a pesticide application, and how they can be addressed in order to improve pesticide performance. In conclusion, we know that water quality affects pesticide performance. Pesticides do degrade and become ineffective. Poor water quality results in profit loss from wasted time, inactive product, and a lower quality or lower yielding crop. Thank you for your time.